Hello, Vinyl Community. It's Glenn Calloway from the basement with my special guest and partner in crime, Sam St. John. Hi, Sam. Glenn, greetings from Virginia. Awesome. This is great. So we're about to get started on our Bob Dylan countdown, celebrating Bob's 80th birthday on the 24th of May. So we, uh, if anybody watched our introductory video, you'll understand that we picked 80 songs between us, uh, one for every year of Bob's life. And uh, we're going to do a countdown of these 80 and rank them. And uh, culminating in our last video on his birth date of May 24th, where we'll do a countdown on our final 20. So we're going to do 20 songs each video, see how it goes. Neither of us know where we ranked the songs. We both are working from the same list. We came up with it together. We, uh, it worked out really well, actually. We ended up picking 25 of the same songs, 25 I picked, Sam picked 25, and then we added another five to make 80. So it's, the list is, is uh, Great minds. indicative of uh, a good partnership here. So, um, <laughs> so without further ado, I got my Bob Dylan hat on, by the way. Very nice. Um, we're going to pass it off to Sam to start off. So we're going to do five songs each and try not to, you know, get too upset with each other here as we're Yeah, doing. it's a good thing we have a screen, you know, otherwise we might be at each other's throats. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the protection of um, cyber um, <laughs> meeting. But yeah, we'll, um, thanks again, Glenn, for, for the invite. I know this has kind of been a, a month or two month long process um, to get, get this together. Um, so it was really fun gathering the songs, um, really neat trying to knock these out and try not to you know throw other songs into the ring later in the game but yeah without further ado um like glenn said we're gonna do five songs i'm gonna start with number 80 so the bottom of my list of the 80 that we picked not necessarily my least favorite dylan song or my 80th favorite dylan song it's just the 80th on our list that we compiled my number 80 is from planet waves going going gone is number 80. Okay. And, uh, You're lucky the border's closed. I'd be coming down there after you. Oh, no. It's number 80 is <laughs> already doesn't hurt. No, I'm just not, I might just I might turn it off now. Um, it's actually in my no, bottom I, 20 list, too. So I, I'm not going to, uh, yeah, we're not. <laughs> um, it's a great album. Um, it was his reunion with the band. Um, you know, it was just before he started getting into his. his um, divorce stage with blood on the tracks a lot of people call that his divorce album um this is kind of a precursor i think to um to that to that era of blood on the tracks and um i just think i mean it's a great song i mean i don't hate any of these songs um it's just a little too dirgy for me okay um i, mean, I like when robbie's got good playing robbie robertson um classic band sound yeah. um, backing but you know I don't have a lot to say about it um, I think just because of the dirgy like nature of it and almost like you're like Dylan you're running that nail through my heart too many times <laughs> um, but you know again I don't hate it I don't well, love lucky it we did, lucky we didn't pick the song dirge off of that album oh that's very true that's right yeah. hey <laughs> <laughs> um, all right that was number 80 number 79 um, from our intro video, I mentioned that this was from the first Dylan album that I ever bought, um, which was Oh Mercy. And the song is Everything is Broken. Oh, and okay. um, again, great, great production on this album. Um, this was the third track from Oh Mercy, um, produced by Glenn's fellow Canadian, Mr. Lenoir. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know, I think Part of the reason I put this so low is that Dylan is so much better than this. Um, it's just, it's, you know, he's listing off, you know, everything being broken, broken bottles, broken strings. Um, so it's not necessarily because of how it sounds or the musicality of it. It's just that Dylan, it's just, I think it's just simplified Dylan. Yeah. And, um, you know, I love it. It's, I mean, it fits perfectly on the album. I mean, I don't skip it. But um, it, something had to be 79. So that was it. Interesting. Um, number 78. 
is and my albums already got out of order um number 78 is from shot of love um the third of dylan's gospel albums the song is property of jesus and um again great it's a great rocker um that, based on the title you're like oh it's you know probably some hokey you know one of his what some people what people believe was his hokey period which i don't agree with at all i mean listen to his um bootleg series from this era um and you'll realize how you know provocative he really was during it um again i think i mentioned that uh chrissy hind from the pretenders does a live cover of it i watched um, that video today it's it's really good really I mean, good no uh, it's i mean like i said it's a great you know if we were ranking dylan albums shot of love might be might be top five dylan album wow um but again something had to be 78 that was it um interesting yeah chris like i don't well i shouldn't give away my thing i'm not a huge fan of that song but i was listening to the chrissy hine version today and i went wow that's a pretty good song when she does it it's she does it much better than him actually i'm sorry property of, of jesus i love chrissy hines version it was awesome yeah i mean it, it could have been a pretender song you it know sold me on the song more than the bob version actually of a rare instance i'm sure yeah um but yeah this is another one of those that i think is gonna might hurt your heart a little bit um because i know your affinity for this album um the album i'll start with that is and i'm sorry for the glare folks is desire um the song is considered by many one of Dylan's best is Hurricane. Uh -huh. um, I think part of it is um, I, with Dylan's songs, I don't care. I'm not somebody who cares about length. I don't, I don't care about, you know, like Murder Most Foul, the most, one of the most recent singles from his last album. It was almost 17 minutes. I don't care. Highlands, mm -hmm. I don't care. Um, but this one, something about it is just, even though it's not quite eight minutes, it it's just a little long for me for the story. It's about Reuben Carter, the boxer, mm -hmm. um, who was tried, you know, pre with prejudice um, based on his skin color. Um, and Dylan, during that, the Rolling Thunder Review Tour, he was trying to, you know, push people to sign petitions to get him out of jail. Um, everybody knows the story if you're a Dylan fan. Um, and Part of it might be because I'm a little, um, right now with just my Dylan listening, I'm a little burnt out with that stage of Dylan's life, the Rolling Thunder, because I just recently purchased the Rolling Thunder box set. Oh, and good. Um, I listened to, you know, all of the songs and it's almost the same set list for each, each, um, each mm -hmm. album. Yeah. Um, so again, it's a great, it's a great you know, message behind it. It's very biting. It's, it kind of harkens back to his early sixties political songs. Yeah. Um, and, you know, this is almost, you know, late thirties, Dylan, I mean, he's getting to close, closer to his middle age, but he's still got that bite to him, um, which he finds again and again, and as we all know, um, but anyway, 77 is hurricane and, uh, let's see how far was I going? 76. So this is, this is my fifth in this category. Yeah. Um, 76 for me is, um, it was a single. Um, from the movie Wonder Boys in 2000. The song is Things Have Changed. Um, again, kind of the same with Hurricane. I think I'm just, um, I think it's a fatigue thing. Um, I know that's a common phrase that people use with, with songs. Um, I, unfortunately, I don't have any kind of physical copy to show um, for this. You might have something. Uh, um, things Have Changed. I'm trying to think of what album it's off of. Do you, it might have been from the soundtrack. Um, I'm not sure if it was on a bootleg. Yeah, I think this is the one the one song that's not on any Dylan albums, isn't it? I don't even think it's on any of the bootleg series albums. No, I think it was specifically for the soundtrack yeah. for Wonder Boys. Um, yeah. But I, th I think it's a fatigue thing for for live Dylan because this has been his standard opening now, his opening song for probably, probably since at least, let's see, the first time I saw Dylan was 20, uh, 2015. Um, 
So I mean, he's been singing the song live to open at least for six years, and it's just, yeah. you know, it, it takes away a little bit from it because it's predictable when you're going to a, a modern Dylan show that he's going to open with "Things Have Changed." Um, you know, it's a it's a great tune. I've, I've I've seen Dylan three times, all three times, you know, in recent years, um, and every time he does this, it is it, he varies it. So sometimes it sounds almost Irish the way he's done like a folky lilt to it. Mm -hmm. um and other times it's more you know angry it's you know i mean it's it's a great it's a great opener but again something had to be 76 um and just based solely because i wish he would have a new opener um yeah things have changed. so there's my first you know my 80 through 76 so on to the the man in charge and i never even got mad at you you didn't no 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 i kept my cool that's good just I'm 75 and songs. I'm seething inside, but I'm okay. Excited. Yeah, <laughs> you have to go outside <laughs> after this video and scream. Okay, now I just want to get even. Yeah, no, oh I'm gosh. just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, uh, the list is already made. I'm not trying to make. I'm not going to change it. Okay, okay, my number eighty, which you had in the bottom, your bottom five, property of Jesus. Now I okay. do like the Christian rock period. Mm -hmm. Slow Train Coming is a freaking awesome album. Mm -hmm. um, this album, I don't know, I guess we're not really talking about albums. Uh, I'm not a big fan of, except I've got three songs on this album that I love. Uh, <laughs> Every Grain of Sand, The Groom Still Waiting at the Altar, and Heart of Mine, I really like. But Property of Jesus just doesn't do it for me. His Maybe it's his version of it, because like I said, I listened to Chrissy Hines today, her version, and uh, it kind of piqued my interest a little more. Then I went back and listened to this again, going, hmm, maybe maybe I shouldn't have it ranked so low. But like you say, <laughs> something has to be number 80, and it is Property of Jesus. I had a feel I if I was a betting man, I would have guessed that that would have been your 80. But I'm not wow. a betting man. So <laughs> I think I'm gonna surprise you with this pick. The first track on this album, right here, another side of Bob Dylan. You know what that is? um all i really want to do yeah oh no now i don't like bob's version of this song i wish he would have sang it straight because it's a good song but i think it turns me off that he kind of turned it into a joke he, he's like laughing through some of it yeah and i i don't like that but when you listen to the birds version mm -hmm. It's a fantastic song. Not that okay. he had to do it bird-like, but I just wish he would have done it a bit more straight because it always kind of just bugs me. I don't know why. Sure. So uh, number 79, all I really want to do. Number 78, I listened to this album today for, uh, I haven't listened to New Morning for a while. And uh, it's Great such album. a good album. It's a really good album. In 1970, it was kind of panned. It wasn't really, didn't get, you know, it's very very mellow yeah it's very cool time passes slowly mm. is my number 78 and uh i really don't have anything to say other than it's number 78 <laughs> yeah i will discuss that song at a later period okay so I'll, i will uh remain silent for now and number 77 from an album you just showed I think. Oh, from no, you didn't show it. One of my favorite Dylan albums, and I do like the song, but just there's just so many great songs. I can feel my heart. Infidels, fantastic album. License to Kill. Okay. Now, I like License to Kill. It's a good song. They're all. It's good. We're, we're at the bottom of this list here. It's almost like something had to be sacrificed to go to the bottom. Of this yeah. List, I think this yeah. is a great. Great album, one of my favorite Dylan albums. So, um, yeah, License to Kill is my number 77. And my number 76, another fine Dylan album, mm. Nashville Skyline, is One More Night. I really like this album. And uh, One More Night's a good song, it's a good country song. But uh, mm. yeah, just. 
again, I think Dylan's just done better. That's all. Sure. So that's my that's my first five. All right. Well, again, I'm not uh I'm not seething yet, but you know, the night is young, the evening is young. <laughs> so we'll see. Um I might lose my appetite for supper later on. So we'll <laughs> I know I know how to reach you. Um <laughs> all right. Number 75 for Sam. Um back to one of the albums I've already showed. So I'm already double dipping in an album. And um again, it's the same reason I picked the other song so low from Desire. One more cup of coffee. Um very non-Dylan like in terms of a song, but it's it's one of his best in terms of making you like giving you a feel like it puts you in a place physically like you feel like you're in like a caravan with Dylan like as a traveling minstrel mm -hmm. like playing his lute um and you, like you like you can smell like setting up the tents and like having camels and having dark black coffee <laughs> over yeah. the fire it's it's theatrical um, it is theatrical it's like uh, yeah. I guess that's having Maybe the influence of Jock Levy working, working yeah. on writing the songs. Who was a yeah. who was a theater guy? And Canadian? No, he's uh, from New York, I think. Okay. Um, and plus, Scarlet Scarlet Rivera's oh, uh, fiddle playing. I love playing. that woman. Yeah. See, that's why I love those songs so much. Her playing is just incredible on those on that. And she really added. She really added to the live shows too of that tour, yeah. as you know. That's, I mean. That's one song that is one of the killer tracks, I think, on the Rolling Thunder tours. I love the way. Yeah, she really that. lets it wail. Yeah. Um, but yeah, number uh, 75, one more cup of coffee. Uh, 74. Um, again, I actually, I don't own this album. Um, I own the, the complete bootleg of it, but I didn't want to lug the bootleg down here. Um, it's from the basement tapes. And the song is This Wheels on Fire. Um, of course, famously covered by the band um, from, you know, Big Pink. Um, let me see if I had anything spectacular. It's a co-write with uh, Rick Danko mm -hmm. of, uh, of the band, bass player, multi-instrumentalist, harmony, vocalist extraordinaire. Um, again, back to you with um, Property of Jesus. And I think with most people, they prefer the band version. I mean, that's the version that you know. Um, yeah. It was it's clean on the record, you know. It was studio um, rehearsed. Totally um, agree. But you know, it's a great song. It's very haunting, um, just with the lyrical content, like almost like end days. Mm -hmm. um, it can be open for interpretation for what it means. Um, some early, you know, parts of some maybe some biblical aspects in Dylan's life that were starting to maybe make themselves known. Talking to people up in Woodstock, who knows um dylan's a mystic in his own right um so yeah 74 this wheel's on fire all right folks this is the one where they might turn off the video and say that i have no merit to talk about bob dylan okay so th there's my teaser all right first off i'm going to show the album and if, when i show the album you're probably going to know with this intro what i'm talking about the album okay is john wesley Harden. You have a guess? One of my favorite Dylan albums. So, Ballad of Frankie Lee and Judas Priest? No. All Along the Watchtower? <clears throat> All Along the Watchtower. Wow. Number 73. Um, yeah, I mean, all right. So, so, part of this might be out of spite. Um, and here's why I can, what I can explain. I, I'm not going to mention names. Um, but I know I, there are people in my circle that fall under a vast you know, number of people that say, you know, oh, Dylan, you know, he's never great. You don't hear his stuff on the radio. You don't, you know, his voice is, you know, crud, this and that. And like all we ever hear is all on the watchtower. Like all we ever hear on the radio is all on the watchtower from, from Bob Dylan and Jimi Hendrix. Um, and of course, you know, what's what's very neat about this song is that when when Jimmy came out with his version, um, that's the version Dylan started really mimicking in concert <laughs> was Jimmy's version because it kind of became Jimmy's song, you know, with Bob kind of standing in the shadows. Um, that's my opinion. People might hate write you hate mail and you know direct all hate mail to Glenn, not to me. 
um, <laughs> for inviting me. Um, but I think it's more the reason it's so low is because people think that this is all Dylan has. Um, the people that listen to, to, to rock radio, not people that even try to attempt to listen to music. Um, so I'm not, not going to say anything else about it. I put it this low. I'm going to keep it this low. Can and I comment? Please. I think when you hear Dylan's version, his original version, because now he got when he after Hendrix did it, Dylan started doing it in concert pretty much the way Hendrix does it. He livened it yeah. up a bit with the electric guitars and whatever. Huh. Yeah. I think if you listen to Dylan's version mm -hmm. and heard John Mussey Harding and then listen to Electric Ladyland and heard uh, all all on the last hour, you wouldn't even know it's the same song. Like I mean oh, you yeah. really just took it. Like whatever yeah. you heard in the lyrics to that song in the chord progression or whatever. And was, and then came up with that is is so to was, me it's a great great song that dylan never brought to its potential very good very i love the harmonica in it yeah um but now with the electric ladyland that that came out the same year as this didn't it was that 67 uh electric lady 69 oh okay so it was two years later because yeah hendrix was famous for um you know like to use Sergeant Pepper as an example. Yeah, he he did that live like four days or so after the album came out yeah. with the Beatles in the audience. Yeah, and you know they were you know blown away. He learned the song, you know, and was confident enough to play it live. But you know, yeah. that's its own. You know, moving into Beatles territory, we want to stick to Dylan. Yeah. So uh, seventy three, all on the Watchtower. Cool. Um, let's see, one, two, three. So I've got two more. All right, um, from I know it's on the Biograph album. Um, I, it might be on other bootlegs. Uh, 72 is Percy's song. Um, sad song. I mean, it's, you know, 1964. So Dylan was starting to, he was starting to experiment with going electric. I mean, he was close. Um, but this, like, almost I would say one of his, last great pre-electric story songs mm -hmm. um and you you might you know know more about this than i do and whenever you talk about it you're welcome to um to jump in but um but is my understanding that it's based off of a friend who passed away i'm not sure actually the story in a bike fine. accident yeah um i mean it's it's an eight minute song and yeah. i mean it's, it's been covered by a bunch of folks joan baez being a significant yeah. one um, beautiful, my beautiful song. Um, Fairport Convention. The, Fairport Convention yeah. does an amazing job. Yep. Yeah. Um, and, pro and probably the reason that I have it so low is just I'm not as familiar with it as some of the other songs. If I if I had known this song maybe three years ago, it might be higher up. But because it's one that I've just recently been, you know, interested in, that's why it's so low. But it doesn't. I mean, it's a great well, song. It's funny, it was written, like you said, like 64 or whatever. And I never yeah. heard the song until Biograph came out in what year was that? Mm. Like 80 something. Yeah. 20, yeah, but, 20 years later, I heard the song yeah. for the first time and it blew me away. I'm going, man, this is like a, his new his Dylan. vocals fantastic. I love the uh, turn, 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 turn again. It's a real pokey thing. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. A rare Dylan refrain. <laughs> yeah. But um, but yeah, again, it's because of familiarity. Cool. So uh, what was that one, two, three, four? Yeah, one, I need one. seventy number seventy one. Seventy one back to John Wesley um, is Frankie Lee and Judas Priest. And again, this um, probably because I didn't know this song two years ago. Um, it would be much higher, I would say. I mean, I listened, I've listened to several covers in the past few days trying to hone in on this list and um, great story song. Um, you know, that's where Judas Priest got their name as a band. I did um, not know so, that. Yeah, know yeah, it's a, um, it's a temptation song. Um, I mean, Dylan's always yeah. got that, Dylan's always got that, um, you know, thread throughout all of his, all of his music. It, he's got, you know, significant threads and this is one mm -hmm. of them. Um, and, you know, sparse, just like the rest of the album. Beautiful song. 
um i think it's the longest on the album um yeah probably and um yeah frank Kelly and judas priest 71 cool that's very cool okay i'm up number 75 for me title song New uh, okay. good song i've got nothing against it nothing no even critique it in any way i really like the song but just uh something had to be number 75 and new morning volunteered actually <laughs> Okay, and uh, in number 74, I think it's appeared on a couple of different things, but it's definitely on the bootleg series, volume one's the three, is if you gotta go, go now. Oh, okay. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, I think this was recorded during the bringing it all back home sessions around 64. I believe, yeah. Yeah, and it's got that rocky feel to it with that same, like he was just kind of getting into the rock stuff. And uh, so it's kind of a cool song in that regard. I think it's a pretty basic song. And mm -hmm. uh, I think he was kind of just, you know, it was early stages of, yeah. his, of his musical change. So he did better electrically than that. Um, number 73, a beautiful song. But uh, for some reason, it bores me a little bit. And I know Bob likes to sing it live. Is you make make me feel make, my, you, feel make you feel my love off of mm -hmm. uh, time out of mind. Um, I believe when I last time I saw Bob, he, he sang it. Mm -hmm. he, he does he does it a lot. I think on his recent tours. His last two tours, I've seen him do it. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, beautiful song. And uh, who? Was it Adele who did a version of it? Adele, and then also I th I want to say before that album, Garth Brooks. Really? Yeah, yeah I think that would make but, sense to me. You could make that a countryish kind of a feel mm -hmm. to it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, make me feel make you feel my love. Then number seventy two from Times They Are Changing is the last song on that album restless farewell which is a great freaking song yeah great closer on this album just uh acoustic guitar and bob and uh, great lyrics great song i don't have anything critical to say about it neat thing about that song um and i'll mention it you know when i get to that song um just briefly is that he did that for frank sinatra's uh, 80th birthday that's right i forgot sinatra, about that. Sinatra, sinatra asked him to do that didn't he, he asked him to do it yeah. yeah and that's when sinatra's health was starting to fail and yeah beautiful and my number 71 off of where's all my stuff here <laughs> i can't find it so uh love and theft i've got it Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Oh, okay. Now, I really like the song. It's a fun play on words there. Tweedle, Tweedledee and Tweedledum and kind of, you know, yeah, those two characters kind of in, in the song. But, uh, yeah, it's no poncho and lefty. I'll tell you that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and that's my uh, number 71. That's Enjoy a great opener. Friend um let's see 71 yep uh all right number 70 um front i think it's on it's uh, that's definitely on the bootleg um first through third volumes um is blind willie mctell oh and um there's a um actually i mentioned it in our intro video my teacher that introduced me to oh mercy introduced me to this song we sent each other dylan bootleg clips back and forth all day um and this was one that he introduced me to, but he actually introduced it to me through the um, 2012 performance that Dylan did to honor Martin Scorsese. Oh, I don't know if I've seen that. There's a, it's a clear video on YouTube of him, like at the performance, the, the audio doesn't match the, the mouths moving, but it's worth it. 
And um, you can see Scorsese and I think Steven Spielberg is there and they're just in awe of like watching Dylan sing this song. Oh, really? Um, so seven, eight, it's a haunting song. Um, you know, Blind Willow McTell, of course, one of the early, um, one of the early um, blues legends. Um, so yeah, that was um, number 70 for me. Uh, 69 going back to John Wesley Harding and again I don't hate this album um but it's it was a later Dylan discovery for me um so that's why it's so low it's the title track uh John Wesley Harding short little song um great it's a, it's a perfect opener it sets the mood for the album um kind of getting Dylan back into the, this um you know he's in his country ish phase still mm -hmm. um and um yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know what else to say. I mean, the melody is great. Um, it's, it's just, it's just a great tune. Um, I know you'll talk about it later, but um, that's where it had to, that's where it had to fall for me. Sixty nine, um, sixty eight, going to love and theft, different song. Um, where'd it go? High water for Charlie Patton is sixty eight for me. Um, again, another modern live favorite of Dylan. I've, I think he's done it all three times that I've seen him and I've seen him in 15, uh, 15, 17 and 18, maybe. I, I don't know. It's somewhere, somewhere, maybe 14, 16 and 18, I think is what it was. Um, it's, there's some great versions of it. There's a live version of it on the um, Telltale Signs bootleg series. That's very mm -hmm. good. I think from maybe 2002 or three, maybe, maybe 2006 might've been later. Um, I don't remember. I don't have it with me, but um, you know, there's a song by Charlie Patton called "High Water," and yes. Dylan's, um, you know, tribute to that. Um, well, so it's got a banjo in it, so I gotta, I gotta put it up high. Oh, okay. Well, there's a hint, folks. <laughs> uh, let's see. So that was '68. All right, here's another one, my friend, that will maybe cause you to have a convulsion of some sort, because I've heard you talk about this song in other videos and it's considered by critics to be one of his greatest triumphs i'll show the album first <gasps> <laughs> don't don't do that on me don't do it live on camera hold on i the need song. a shot of ryan coke <laughs> uh oh yeah it's after it's after a five almost i don't even know um That's straight coke by the way diet coke no you might, need the hard, you might need the hard stuff after this the bar um, isn't open till 5 30 on a normal night <laughs> and uh i don't know what time it is now but uh it's it's five after five so okay yeah well, maybe i'm ready for a drink after I'm, I'm finished here the song of course is visions of joanna um yeah and uh i know that that's going to be that's going to appear probably not the next video or maybe not even the video after that but for glenn but that's where it is for me um Holy crap yeah, it's um, so I've got you know two Dylan masterpieces in my top, you know my my bottom eighty. Can I ask um, you what what uh, makes you put that at the bottom? The is it the vocals, the lyrics, the song? Uh, there's uh, got to be something. It it might and look. This is another <laughs> discussion. You on the spot, sorry. This is another discussion based on my um my love and hate, not my love and theft, my love and hate relationship with blonde on blonde um it's not my favorite dylan album for one it's probably not even in my top 10 wow um and i i think i had a better appreciation for it when the old crow um tribute album came out yeah. in 2016 um because i mean they're they're doing it in their style but um What's interesting about it that I found when I was doing some minor research was that it was recorded on Valentine's Day. So I thought that was really cool based on the lyrical content of it, um, that he recorded Valentine's Day of 66. So it was recorded in one day as many Dylan great you know, songs were. Yeah. Um, I don't have a strong reason for why it's so low. Um, I just like, you know, almost 60 songs more than that. So- okay. I'll let you um, go. <laughs> I'll still be your friend. How many? How many? Let's see. One, two, three. I've got one more. I've got sixty-six. Yeah. All right, sixty-six. I'll, I'll I'll try to get out of this doldrum. What's this going to be like a Rolling Stone? 
Yeah, exactly. That's that's that was actually gonna be eighty one. <laughs> <laughs> no, stay tuned, folks. Okay. Um, from time out of mind is love sick. Is gonna be uh, sixty six. Um, again, another modern live favorite from Dylan. Um, I remember specifically when I first heard this album and heard that opening song again, back to Mr. Lenoir, who came back to produce this with, with Bobby, um, you know, eight years after Oh Mercy. Um, there's, I mean, a lot of people hate the, the, um, the editing of how Dylan's voice sounds. I love it. I mean, I think it's gritty. I think it's, it's a very muddy album all the way around. Very different than like the clean production of Oh Mercy. Um, it's a great opener. Like, again, I think it's just because of live fatigue of it. But yeah. I think it's one of his best openers for any album. Yeah. I love how he sounds. Wow. So that's, that's um, 66. Interesting. I'm, I, 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 I'm speechless. No, I, no. <laughs> I, I appreciate your picks. No, they're, they're interesting. <laughs> we got to make I, them stay tuned. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's cool. Um, <laughs> it's nice to see a different perspective. Like if we all like the same songs in the same order, this video would be kind of stupid. Sure. Um, I got to tell you this. I'm just totally going off topic here, but we've mentioned Dan, Daniel Lanois a couple times. Back about, I'm going to say 10 years ago, I was involved in a jam session when I still lived in Toronto and I met uh, this one guy, and he said, hey, we do this jam every uh, Tuesday night or Wednesday, whatever it was, in this house in Toronto, and uh, come out. So I went out, and these guys were hot freaking players. A couple of them were session musicians. And uh, one guy played the fiddle, and he was like, he was he was busy, busy playing all around and, and doing a lot of session work. And he was working with Daniel Lamont, and Daniel Lamont was in town. So we're at the jam session. He goes, Daniel Lamont is going to come up and play with us tonight. And I'm like, huh? holy crap. <laughs> and he didn't show up. <laughs> uh -huh. But I was that I was that close to getting to play uh, jam with Daniel Lamont. That would have been pretty Sheesh. cool. Now, before, anyway. before you start your, um, your next five, remind me what your number 70 was, because I'm trying to keep track. My number 70, I haven't, I haven't done that one yet. I'm doing it right now. Uh Oh yeah, well, I stopped. Yeah. Seventy-one was Tweedledee and Tweedledum. <laughs> Continue as you were. <laughs> Number seventy, John Brown. Now, I listened to a couple of versions of John Brown because I wasn't really familiar with the song. I know I'd heard it, but it's just something that went in one ear and out the other because it's on the it's on the Bootleg series, Volume One to Three, and there's a there's only like uh, sixty some songs on this, so it's pretty hard to. Mm. And it's also on this. I don't know if you've ever heard this album, Bob Dylan, uh, Live at the Gas Light, 1962. Mm -hmm. Very kind of primitive recording of him playing at the Gaslight in New York, but really mm. kind of cool. It's a, it's a pretty good historic document. And uh, he does early versions of uh, Hard Rain's Gonna Fall and Don't Think Twice and all that, but he does John Brown on here. And uh, okay. this is pretty good. And uh, same with him. But um, it's a really cool song about a, a guy who's, uh, I don't know, I guess he goes to war and his uh, mom's all proud of him, and, you know, and then he comes home all crippled and whatever. It's a, it's a, it's a cool song. It's a great folk song. Yeah. Really is what it is. And uh, yeah, so that's my number 70. My number 69 is the first song off of this album. And it's a great, great song. If not for you. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just got even with you for Visions of Johanna, I think. Um, <laughs> yeah, great song. I love this, and I love George Harrison's version on All Things Must Pass. I, I Again, I, I can't critique it <laughs> other than saying I really I, I love the song. It's excellent. Next is an interesting one. Because when I first heard it, I wasn't that big a fan of it. And I listened to it today off of this album. I went to see The Gypsy. Okay. Now, lyrically good. Musically, 
not that great on this album, but but when you buy this, yes, and you hear I went to see the gypsy off of this, yes. mm -hmm. it is one of uh, like it just blew me away. I kept playing it over and over again. Fantastic. Yep. Yeah. So um that's yeah. a definitive version if you ask me. But... Yes, absolutely. And and I wouldn't even even I think I was the one who suggested that song. I wouldn't even have suggested it if it wasn't for this version. Uh, I agree. Yeah. So, what to see the gypsy? Um, next, fantastic song. Really powerful song. Off of times they are changing with God on our side. That's okay. That one got me. <laughs> that one got me. Bang! Got you. That one, yeah. <laughs> Here. Here, have a drink. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It's just—it's a great song. I, I don't know. I mean, all these all the songs out of this period are so powerful and amazing. Yeah. I, again, I can't—I can't say a bad thing about it. I just had to rank rank it somewhere. And finally, this album's going to show its face. Lily, Rosemary, and the Jack of Hearts. Okay. He should have made a movie out of that song. It's a great song. Yes. I, I always, I actually, I think I heard somewhere that someone wanted to turn it into a movie script and make a song out of it. It's, I think uh, so. who else but Bob could do this, like come up with like a cinematic song like this? It's just tells a story of these three people and the bank heist and yeah. uh, their interactions with each other. And, it's just incredible the way that man's mind works. It's just that it, it shows his true, true genius, as far as I'm concerned. And I bet you, I bet you, he had pages and pages and pages of verses. Can you imagine? Yeah, yeah. What yeah. what you said about the movie um, that reminds me. There's a um, the Tom Petty song um, "Into the Great Wide Open," which the um, the music video had Johnny Depp in it, very young Johnny Depp. And I know somebody approached Tom and they're like, "Hey, like we want to make this into a movie." And his only response was, it already is. Oh. Yeah, I think that's just the coolest line. Yeah. I've written the song. That's all there needs to be. Yeah. We oh, don't need cool. to explain this. I love that it. That is cool. So we are down to our last five here for this video. Last five. That'll be our first 20. So Let's make it, it good. We got to leave them. We got to leave them on a high note here. <laughs> well I, I hope we've done that so far maybe they've <laughs> turned off the screen by this point but um anyway well i, ha I haven't i haven't yelled at you yet for uh anything you, so haven't. you know that'd, that'd be a good ending we're yeah we're off to a good start um okay. yeah my number 65 um off of the most recent bobby album hopefully not the last rough and rowdy ways the song is false prophet um great blues guitar sound i'm guessing charlie sexton playing the the lead on it um yeah it's um yeah it's a better picture of it um again it was one of the it was the third single released from the rough and rowdy ways album and because the first two songs that he released from that album were Murder, Murder, Foul and I Contain Multitudes, which were very slow and very sparse. This one was almost like rock or kind of like early Roman Kings from mm -hmm. Tempest. Yeah. And um, what surprised a lot of people, which it shouldn't by this point, the Bobby being the folk singer that he is and the folk traditionalist, is that the melody is based almost entirely off of the song If Lovin' Is Believin' by Billy the Kid Emerson. Uh, of Sun Records fame. Oh, cool. Um, so, and I, I, I want to say, I, I think they slightly changed the time signature or added like an extra note into the intro. Mm -hmm. But it's not like if you listen to that song again, it's called If Loving Is Believing. I I'm mean, there's, to there's no question. There's no question. I mean, that's where it came from. But again, 100 Bobby songs back to Restless Farewell. I mean, that, that came from, um, you know, old Irish, you know, the parting glass, I think is where that melody came from um so yeah false prophet check out that album too it's a great album rough and round ways oh amazing album. um all right 64 
um, is going to be from this album. The song is Senor Tales of Yankee Power. Um, and this is one of those songs that I prefer about three other versions over Dylan's version, but I'm basing it solely off of, I mean, this is a Dylan song ranking, so it's not who's, Dylan's Whose version. other versions have you heard? I got to know, because there's one, there's one I absolutely love more than I know Dylan's. what yours is. I can almost guarantee you I know what yours is, and that's going to be Tim O'Brien. Yes. Off of oh. the Red on Blonde tribute. Fantastic. Version. That's one of them. That's one of them. Um, I guess it's really, really two main ones. I've seen a different version, but there's another one. And I don't promote modern country music because the word country is a very strong word in today's genre. But Dirks Bentley, who is okay. one of the mega you know, guys, from what I understand, started out in bluegrass. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he does a version with the Traveling McCurries. Oh, cool. Um, Del McCurry's band. Who are you don't get better bluegrass summer. guys than that. So. So, yeah, I mean, and there's a live version that he does at the uh, the ramen, I believe. Really? Which is fantastic. Of Senor. I hear that. Um, there's another version that was put up on Facebook. It was it was Tim O'Brien, but he was accompanied with Sam Bush. It was just the two of them, like oh. at Sam Bush's house. And that was just fantastic. Was oh, Tim that would have been good. Sam does yeah. these things every Friday, right? He does. This, yeah, that the... was one of them. Oh, it was one of them man. in his living room. Um, so yeah, it's Senor 64. It's a great song. It can be a hundred different genres. There's a banjo when Tim O'Brien does uh Senor, the banjo player in that his name's Charlie Cushman. And he does okay. the most incredible banjo part in that song. And um, I had a friend who was just an amazing musician, great banjo player, great flat picker, and he uh taught me how to play that song. I couldn't figure it out. It was just so okay. hard and challenging and he was one of those guys who could just listen to a record a couple of times and figure things mm. out the type of and, people that make uh, it sick <laughs> he, yeah he, he figured it all out for me and taught me over a period of about a month wow and i went home and practiced it and practiced it and practiced it to try and get it to sound the same way as charlie Cushman's. and mm. eventually i got it but it's I, I i let it go i didn't it's one of those things if you don't it's so challenging if you don't keep playing it all the time you're going to Forget I just it. bought a banjo last or three weeks ago. I've never touched one. Oh, um, wow. Some guy was selling it online for like a hundred and it was 150 bucks. I got them down to a hundred and it needs to be serviced very badly. Yeah. Um, but I'm having fun trying to play it. Well, if you ever want to just do a zoom thing privately between two of us, I'll show you some stuff. That's it. I'll, I'm all in. Good. Um, yeah. Uh, so, senior. Okay. You, that's number 64. You got uh 63 62 and 61 to go um where to go um you already mentioned this song um from love and theft um tweedle d and tweedle um but we've kind of said what needs to be said about it i mean again it's a great great opening um song um you know it, it was neat i mean that that whole album is just it's a it's a mood album um it didn't get the credit that it should have because of the date that it came out, yeah. which was not which was 9-11, um, 2001. Um, so it, you know, it didn't get what it should have. Um, yeah, it's a great it's album. One of my it's favorite still considered part of his, yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, it's as good as a lot of his stuff from the 70s, mm -hmm. I'd say easy. Um, but yeah, we've already talked about it, so I won't go into depth anymore. That's 63. Um, 62. Um, from uh blonde on blonde and again this song came i i appreciated this song much more after old crow did it because i really got to listen to their styling of it and the song is um one of us must know sooner or later um the way that they sing it and going back to how bob sings it as well it's it's a, it's a sad song I mean, it's a really sad song, and yeah, it's one of those that you know, it's a universal feeling that one of us is going to know how the other feels at some point, and you may or may not like it. Um, and with with Old Crow, um, Critter Fuqua is the lead vocalist on it, um, and he's just got like this like Appalachian, you know, mournfulness. Being from Virginia, I mean, Old Crow's from Virginia. They just two hours up the road from where I live. Well, I didn't um, know that. Yeah, they um from Harrisonburg, Virginia, and um. 
I mean, it's it's just a great song. It's one of his best, I think. Um, but you know, I've I've got others before it, so that's sixty two for me. Okay, cool. And sixty one to the round last off one of the day. Drum roll. First video with you um, is going to be back to uh, Love and Theft. The song is Mississippi, which is just after Tweedledee and Tweedledum on the album. And Again, this song I gained more appreciation for. I've always I always loved the guitar interlude between, you know, stayed in Mississippi a day too long. Just it's yeah. just great the way it sounds. Yeah, it's great. Bom, bom, bom. Yeah. yeah. And um again, Telltale Signs opened my eyes even more to this because mm -hmm. the bootleg album, they took different variants of it, different lyrical changes, instrumentation. Um, I think there might be a version of just Bob on guitar. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it's just one of those songs that he's always tinkering with. And I think when he does it live, um, he hasn't done it live, I don't think, in the last couple of years, but it's one of those um, kind of like tangled up in blue that he's always changing. Um, so that being said, there are my first uh, 20 uh, in the list. So oh, you did on great, man. I'm, uh, I'm impressed. Um. Okay, my number 65 is Time Out of Mind, Love Sick, the opening track. Great song. Like you said, he does it great live. Uh, it's kind of one of his favorites. And uh, it was kind of mind blowing when this album came out and kind of put him back on the map. And that was the opening track. And, uh, you know, it's the kind of song everybody heard. And just that haunting guitar, yeah, just kind of goes, dang, dang. and he's, he's got, then he comes up with that, yeah. that haunting vocal, and uh, it's a, it's a great song, love sick. And we were just one off on our ranking of that, yeah. So that's that's pretty good. Okay, sixty four. I'm going to desire. One more cup of coffee. Now we already kind of talked about how theatrical it is and um i just freaking i think i grew to love this song so much from being at the two rolling thunder yeah. shows and the live version is just great when they go to that alley below it's just like it's, oh, it's just like it's one of those moments you just go oh that's yeah. awesome and scarlet rivera's playing it's phenomenal they need Lou doing background vocals on this album. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, I uh, I am a big fan of that song. So it's number 64. Now we're going back to the masterpiece that is Blood on the Tracks, Shelter from the Storm. Ooh. Probably should have ranked it higher. I, I, I'm probably slapping myself for ranking low because I absolutely love the song. Fantastic. Great song. Shelter from the Storm. This whole album's incredible. So I hope you're not of a jam. got a bad note on it. Yeah, that's one of the best lines. Um, I use a little too much force. Yeah. Now, a, a, album, jam, a song that you rank very low is my next one. <laughs> um, where did it go? I can't find it, my CD anymore. But uh, I'm, I'll have it. Planet Waves. Going, going, Got gone. It. it is dirge like. I, I'm a dirgy guy. I like, uh, I like Bob's dirginess. And uh, <laughs> it's a great song, and you want to hear an amazing version of it, haunting as hell. I don't know if you've ever heard this album, Greg Goldman's uh, Southern Blood. That was his last one, wasn't it? That was the one he did when he was dying of cancer, and he yeah, the song of all his kind of favorite songs, and they were all kind of you know, okay, a bit mel it's a bit melancholy. There's a couple of rockers on it, but mostly it's you know, it's like song for Adam Jackson Brown, but he doesn't. Black Muddy River, the uh, great Ooh, dead yeah. song. Uh, yeah, that he does, has to be sad. Yeah, yeah but he does he uh, going, going gone on here. It's so good. But uh, I just think it's an amazing song. I, I love it. But it is dirty. You hit the nail on the head. <laughs> and my last pick 
I don't think it was on any albums other than this. But on the or, uh, Greatest Hits Volume 2, when I paint my masterpiece. Mm. Again, I think I'm making this song too low because I freaking love this song. And, mm. but you again, more, like more we talked about it. with with This Wheels on Fire and All on the Watchtower, the definitive version is the band on Cahoots. They do an amazing mm -hmm. version of When I Paint My Masterpiece. That's what I would base how great yeah. the song is when you hear this version. So, uh, yeah, that's my number 61. So that was a um, that was a basement tape song because I believe it's on the uh, it's on the complete basement tapes. Oh, really? I believe I didn't know. I don't. Yeah. Um, I have the complete basement tapes. I don't know. I don't recall hearing it for some reason. I think it's on there. Yeah, but I know there's a lot of music on that. It probably is. It probably is on that. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So. Um, uh, yeah. Good list. Yeah, you too. This was yeah. fun. A good start. I'm not as um not as stressed about it now, knowing that <laughs> I've already knocked out two of the big ones. <laughs> well. My motivation for video number two, which we'll record next uh, for next Monday, is uh, uh, going to be getting even. Oh, <laughs> you, can't, you can't do that to Bob, though. You can't you can't sacrifice Bob to no, get even with me. I can't. I love all these songs. Picking eighty songs out of a, out of a catalog of over five hundred is uh, incredible. You just think of this man's career, and he's, you know, who else can do this? Like, who else can put out? How many studio albums? Four, around 40? I think 39 was Rough and Rowdy Ways, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, we're close. But then, then, okay, that's fine. But then you've got bootleg series up to volume, what are we up to now, 14, 15? I don't even remember. And those and, are going to go on forever. And this is all stuff that most of the stuff on these is like there's 60 songs that were never on an album. Like, I mean, it's crazy. And the, the songs that we know might have a new verse so that just shows how much writing he's done yeah i know yeah. it's just it, it's actually it's just an incredible the man is uh there's never been another like him and there never will be i don't think no yeah so uh, i'm really glad we're doing this to celebrate bob's life and uh his 80th birthday coming up and hope he's got many more to go and uh still gonna be able to tour when we get over this covid thing and because i'd love to see him one more time for sure mm -hmm. and thanks for doing this sam today so we're gonna be back with uh, with the next uh, twenty songs in another week. Sounds good. Awesome. Thanks so much, Sam. Everybody, peace out. Have a great day. Take care.